greetings and welcome to Obsidian Soft. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to make a cool but easy basketball game in MIT App Inventor. First of all, open up MIT App Inventor, go to Projects, start a new project and call it Basketball. For screen 1, make a line horizontal center, a line vertical center. Let's upload some media. So I will be uploading a basketball court image in vertical form. From drawing and animation, drag and drop a canvas, make the height and width both 95% and choose the background image, the image that we uploaded earlier. And I'm also going to make the paint color white and the font size 30 because I will be also drawing the score as a text in the middle of the canvas. Now from drawing an animation again, drag and drop two ball sprites. Rename the first one to ball. So this will be our actual basketball and we are going to make the radius 13 and I'm going to make its interval which is the interval after which it moves to 50 milliseconds and I'm also going to make the color of the ball by going to paint color a dark orange color so let's go to custom and use a dark orange color okay Rename the second ball sprite to basket. This will be actually an almost invisible sprite which will be positioned over our basket in this basketball court image. Okay, and the reason we are not going to be making it invisible by unchecking visible is because then we will not be able to detect collision events. So for detecting collision events, we have to make it visible, but we are going to make it transparent by going to its paint color and choosing again custom and choosing a somewhat similar color to this color where the basket is actually located. So somewhere here, let's make it a bit lighter. And I'm also going to reduce its opacity so it becomes transparent. So as you can see, it's not visible anymore. And I'm going to make its radius 10. We will give both these sprites, the ball and the basket, the positions on this canvas in the code, in the block section. Now from sensors, drag and drop a clock sensor and I will tell you why it is needed when we go to the code but just make the timer interval 200 and the timer should always fire and the timer should be enabled. Our screen design is done, so let's go to the block section. Get the balls get flung event. That is the event that is triggered when we fling our finger on the screen. And we are going to set our ball speed to the speed of the fling multiplied by 7. So go to maths and get the multiplication block and from ball get its setter for speed. So set the speed to a multiplication of the speed of the fling. So get speed multiplied by 7. And we are going to set the ball's heading, that is direction, to the heading of the fling. Now, why do we need the clock? So first, get its timer event, which is triggered after 200 milliseconds. Now, in this timer, we will be setting the invisible basket's position to be on top of the actual basket 
here. But why are we not doing it in screens initialize event and why here? Because I have noticed that in iPhone, any initialization using screen properties such as screen height or width doesn't work properly in the screen initialize event. It is better to do it such kind of work after a tiny bit of delay that is I'm using 200 milliseconds here and when the timer will go off we will set our baskets position okay but first of all let's disable the timer so that it doesn't keep on firing so disable it by making timer enable to false so from logic we got the false block after disabling the timer we are going to set the position of our basket so set basket dot x to the middle of the canvas in terms of width that is horizontally so we have done this kind of calculation before too this is using maths block we need a minus block and we need a division block and we will be plugging the division block here and this is canvas dot width divided by 2 and we have to also take care of the balls width divided by 2 but we don't have to divide it by 2 because we are going to use the radius here which is already the balls sorry the baskets width divided by 2 so basket radius here it is and this will give us the x position in the middle of the screen for our basket and I know that for my basket to come over that image, the y should be 50. So the y might be different for you if you're using a different basketball court image. Okay, next what happens when something collides with our invisible basket? It is the ball so we should increase our score but we should also reset a ball to its starting or original position on the canvas so let's first make a procedure by going to procedure and getting this first block and call it reset ball because we will be using it more than once so it's better to make a procedure First of all, we are going to set the ball speed to zero because we don't want the ball to keep on moving after being reset. So, set the ball's speed to zero. And then we are going to give it a position in the middle of the canvas width wise but somewhere over here. Okay, so that is its original or starting position. So we can duplicate this one because this will give us the middle of the canvas for balls X. But we just need to change the basket to ball and duplicate this. But here for the balls Y, we are going to do a bit of calculation and it will be a minus block from maths. Okay. And here we are going to be subtracting 200 from the canvas's height. So I can plug it back in and this is 200. And this will give us a very nice ball's original position somewhere over here. Okay. Also make a global variable by going to variables for a score and assign it zero. So from maths get the zero block. Next we get the collided event for our basket. So when the basket collides with some sprite so in our case it will be the ball. So check when it collides and get, for that we need from control the if then block and here we are going to check if our basket is colliding with the ball okay so go to basket and use this procedure call basket dot colliding with and the other here is the ball so if i go to ball 
I can get its component, its exact down at the end. So if the basket is colliding with the ball, we are first of all going to reset our ball. So call the procedure reset ball. And we are also going to clear up our canvas because we are going to redraw the new score. Now we have to get the new score. So set global score to a plus of whatever is inside the score at that time plus 1. Okay. And then we are going to draw on the canvas. So if I go to canvas, I can get this draw text procedure. And here our text is basically a join. So go to text and get a join. And the first block in our join is just score colon space. And then I can duplicate the getter for score here. And we want our score to be drawn exactly in the middle of the canvas. So for that, I'm going to give it the canvas's width divided by 2. So I can duplicate from here, bring it down, duplicate again, and make it height, okay? Now, our reset ball procedure, this one, which sets the speed to zero and give it its starting position. We should call it when the screen is initialized. So call the procedure reset ball. And what about the situation in which the ball hits the edges? Okay, so if it hits the top edge or the bottom edge, we should reset it then too. And in case of right or left edge, we are just going to make it bounce, okay? So going back to blocks. So from ball, get its edge reached event. Let me clean up the blocks. So this is the edge reached event. And we are going to check for the edge. So from control, get the if then else block. And from logic, get the or block plug it in the if and again from logic get the equal to block and if our edge is equal to 1 or just let's duplicate this one it's equal to minus 1 remember I duplicate by right clicking on the block okay so if it is top or bottom I am going to call my procedure reset ball and in the other situation that is right or left edge I'm just going to call my ball to bounce and give it the edge okay so the edge is here hover over it okay so the ball should bounce. Now this is done. I hope you have fun making this simple but cool game, basketball game in MIT App Inventor. Please like my video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do so so that you don't miss any of the great projects that I've planned for you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day and goodbye.